Welcome back to Up North, your Big Sky podcast. I'm Chris, that's Kyler, and joining us today, we have a special guest, our third secret co-host. Some of you may know him, some of you may not, but we have Alex Boatman with us today, everybody. The best of all time. Alex, how are you today? Chris, it's good to be back. It's been a little while. Um, You know, when you came to me with this project, I was like, how can I turn it down? And uh, especially to be able to do this with someone like Kyler, who I feel like I interact with on Twitter um, quite a bit in our back and forth on Big Sky stuff. And I just feel like it couldn't be a better threesome to get this going. Yeah, I feel like this is going to be a great threesome. So, uh, joke's out of the way. Oh, you today. Not me. Yeah, this is an important. <laughs> this is a cool one for us. This is a Boatman and I are a little giddy. We get to cover the Idaho Vandals. Um, for those of you that were unaware, which I'm sure so many of you are unaware, uh, I went to the University of Idaho. Boatman played at the University of Idaho. So we we may or may not have a slight spot soft spot for them. And uh, Kyler Neal knew them when he was in high school. So he has a Yeah, there we go. <laughs> you know, one of our buddies, Jonah, played at Idaho. So, you know, he's a lineman there. So there we go. Yeah. Well, uh, we're going to do the regular old preview stuff that we always do, starting with a 2021 season review. The Idaho Vandals went four and seven. They went three and five in the big sky. They started two and three, but ended two and four. Notably, uh, the versus D1 opponents were outscored 612 to 211. And uh, they fired their coach, Paul Petrino, after nine seasons You're welcome. in the city of Moscow. Uh, any takeaways, guys, from the 2021 season? I'll let, I'll let Bowman um, go first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Frustrating, I think, would be the word, obviously, Chris. Um, and, shoot, it feels like I can't believe we're already here because I remember when we were doing these pods back on tubs trying to figure out who the next coaches would be, and I actually did name drop Eck as someone I, I thought I'd actually go on after. like episode right? one of the coaching show. Yeah, right? I mean, that's, that's the kind of content. That's the kind of insight you get here. Um no, it was frustrating. I mean, shoot, as a long life Idaho fan and someone who played there, it, w- it was tough last year. You know, I talked to a lot of former players all the time, and um, yeah, it was hard. Um, but you know, we wish nothing but the best for Paul. And um, I can now say, you know, Idaho, Idaho fans become Central Michigan Chippewa fans because they got Paul Petrino and Rob Akey calling the plays there. So um, actually, I think Rob Akey's kind of weirdly interim head coach right now because I think McElwain's actually like had is hurt anyway. Just had to take that An Eastern Washington right Eagle. It's we're basically exactly, right. It's a, it's we're just basically the, the Central Michigan Chippewas in podcast form. Kyler's the head coach. <laughs> Alex is the defense so, coordinator, and I'm playing offense. Like, so should we just all here? start? Should we just start a Central uh, and Michigan Eagle. podcast? I think yeah. we should. Um, we no, start- but I mean, I would. It was frustrated. Um, you know, it just felt like there was no rhythm, and I kind of harped on the lack of quarterback consistency. The last couple of years, like Idaho's played an absurd amount of quarterbacks in the last three years, like insane amount. Um, three years. So back to back to 2016. Well, Six yeah, years. I, I kind of since since I've left, right? Like it's it's been it's yeah. been a crazy number of guys with the position, um, and so I think that's kind of been the biggest problem. And I've you know said that multiple times. So yeah, um, but now at least I'm describing me as now as hopeful, frustrating to hopeful. Yeah, my takeaways are, notably, it's just like Idaho State, the state of Idaho thing. It's time to put it past you. It's a new page. Uh, you got a new coach at the helm. So new energy, everything like that. So hopefully this coaching staff's got it figured out, and I think most Vandals are getting re-energized about this program. Kyler, you got any takeaways for Vandal fans from the 2021 season? Yeah, unlike the first three teams we previewed where we didn't see a lot of upside at all, right? At least, like, there's a few things we can take from Idaho last year and even since they've joined the Big Sky where they have seen flurries of greatness or flurries of, let's say, goodness. Maybe not greatness. Greatness is a little bit too extra. But, like, they were seven points away in three matches versus two really good teams and then a mediocre team. Like, they had a chance to beat UC Davis. They were in the game. They had a chance to beat Montana State. They were in the game, and Montana State was a Frisco team. And then they had a chance to, you know, beat NAU, which has been kind of a a weird frisky team for a lot of big sky teams. 
They're not great, but if you catch them on their great day, they're going to beat you. So like, unlike Idaho state, Northern Colorado, where, you know, they were a one in 10 program. They only really beat the bottom. They weren't really competitive with the top. Idaho at least was competitive in a few games versus some of the top tier teams. Their defense was holding some teams to extremely low points, which is a positive, right? It just seems like they couldn't get much of an offense going. The quarterback play was eh. Um, the running game was eh. So, I mean, at least Idaho, this is the start of the big sky to where we can take some positives from last year. Mm-hmm. And hopefully it excels in the, in the next season. We're not sure. But, I mean, definitely be proud of that Eastern Washington game. Be extremely proud. Say that was an amazing game because now you got a new head coach. So you're welcome. Uh, we'll, we'll take that. Didn't Eastern Washington retire two coaches last year? <laughs> Did we retire two? I thought you were bragging about that. I thought you said you guys got two guys fired. Or maybe you got two guys fired in two years. I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, you, we um, made Bo Baldwin quit. You have some hot takes at times. <laughs> Somewhere in there, I thought it was like, oh, we, yeah. We made Bo Baldwin guess, quit. I'll oh, that's that. it. You oh, guys, boy. yeah, you made Cal there Baldwin quit the spring season. <laughs> yeah. That was it. I, I guess Kyler kind of brought some points to me. It's like, I feel like this last year, Idaho team was kind of like the floor this program can achieve, right? You talk about the upside that Idaho might have versus some other teams in this conference that were hovering around the same spot, right? Um, that we have previewed and might preview. Like the ceiling of Idaho as a whole could be higher. Uh, we might have just witnessed, hopefully, as an Idaho fan, I hope we just witnessed the floor. But you're right. There, There is some things maybe when you delve into it a little bit, you can take away some positives. Yeah, it is funny. We're, I've always talked about this. We're fired, or Paul Petrino fired after, what, three, three or four straight years of four wins? And we're talking about a program that just in the early 2010s, like, would have killed to hire a guy that could get us four wins. So it's like, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, the drop oh, obviously has changed. changed some perspectives, but you're right. Like as an Idaho fan and what time both your points together, like four and seven for us was considered bad. And what we hope is our floor. But then for some teams we've talked about like Idaho state, the years they go four and seven, five and six are considered decent to good years. So it's nice to say like, yeah, we're down right now. But the fact that we are looking at four and seven as, as bad, I think goes to show exactly what you were talking about that, there is hopefully a higher ceiling for this program. And hopefully we're not just mm-hmm. one of those uh, giants of the past that never wakes back up. But uh, that's for Jason Eck to figure out. Speaking of figuring out, let's let's uh, grade Mr. Jason. Oh, that's a slide too fast. The Jason Eck <laughs> hire. Uh, so for those of you that watch the other shows, we are doing hot seat meters on all coaches, unless they're brand new. So the two Idaho schools, we're grading them. Because remember, these are students athletes uh so we're gonna keep it academic here um boatman we'll, we'll start with us and we'll have kyler do us a little uh reality check if possible great great the jason eck hire i'm gonna go b plus um like i don't i don't want to say a minus because it's still too early i'm gonna say b plus because there is some fcs pedigree there right um with that sand with that south dakota state team um there is some familiarity with Idaho. He said all the right things. Guys seem to love him so far. Um, fans seem to love him. So, you know, I, 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 I don't want to be too positive with Kyler here and, like, just, you know, talk about the moon because I could probably talk myself into an A- minus, but also a B plus. Yeah, I, I went A-. minus. I, I just did a uh, – for all of you guys that are watching um, up there, right next to the old uh, Instagram logo, boom, little video. That'll be playing uh, me ranking all 100 or 21 new coaching hires. I put Jason Eck, I believe, at three or four. Um, I, I don't think it's the best hire just because he doesn't have any head coaching experience. But I think A minus in the terms that like he has brought in new energy. He's staff he has brought in, I think, is huge. If we were grading staffs as a whole, I do A. Uh, and I, I do really think it's going to work out, but I agree with you. Like, as this isn't like Bobby Hauk returning to Montana where it's an obvious A, A plus. This is still, there's a little bit of chance in this that, you know, South Dakota State has been on a run. How much of it was that? Now we hope and think and believe it was a lot of it. However, we have no proof of the pudding as it were until he's two, three seasons in and we can be like, mm, yep, this was perfect. Uh, I expect this hire to keep increasing in popularity, but I, I think it's a little, uh, 
odd to maybe give it an A, A plus when we haven't seen him ever be a head coach before. Uh, Cause there's just a lot of randoms that come with running your own program. And I think he's talked about that when he's been interviewed by like Johnny ball game down here in Boise or anywhere he's been across where they go like, Hey, we're a little worried that you aren't calling the plays. And he goes, I don't want to be the offensive coach. I want to be the defensive coach. I want to be the special teams coach. And I don't want anybody to view me as one side's coach. I brought somebody with me who I think is highly capable of offense. They'll be coaching the offense. I brought somebody highly capable with me that can coach the defense. They're going to coach the defense. And I'm just here to oversee and coach everybody. And I'm like, that is the exact answer. Because I think part of the problem with the last coach uh, was he definitely probably – was more offensive sided. And I think that's always kind of the issue with the offensive guys. Sometimes is they get a little hung up on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, so that's what moved it up from a B plus to like an A minus for me is he said and done all the right things in my opinion so far. Um, so yeah, I'll give the Jason Eck hire an A minus and by far the best hire in the big sky this season. Kyler. Definitely the best hire in the big sky this season, uh, but I'm actually going to be more of a realist and say it's a B minus. Um, the reason why, yes, South Dakota State has been a premier figure in the FCS for a while, but they were a premier figure before he became their, uh, you know, OC. They were a semifinal team. He brought them to another semifinal and then a title in the weird spring season. He got them to a first round loss his first year as an OC, and then you know another semifinal. So what he did is. He kept momentum on an already program who was building extreme high momentum. Now, the reason why I like him, even though he doesn't have any head coaching experience, and the reason why I'm still giving him a B, where I gave Raggle a C, you know, is because he's an offensive line guy, right? Um, I know Alex Boatman was pretty high on hiring special teams or offensive line guys as head coaches, um, and I agree with him. I do think if you look at, like, the great landscape of a, a head coach, you're going to see a majority of the really killer ones are either offensive line guys or some type of defensive coach, right? So I do like the aspect. He's going to put pieces in place where maybe Idaho struggled a little bit, right? Really build that offensive line. Cause right now it seems like the number ones are amazing. The number two is there's a giant gap. So hopefully hiring this guy who, you know, specializes in offensive line, maybe that can build that depth. So then every single year Idaho can, continue to get improved every single year. The quarterback gets a little bit more time to try and meet, read the defense and throw. Um, there's a couple concerning things though. You know, he's jumped around to about 40 different programs in 12 years. Um, not saying he's going to jump from Idaho because it's definitely the best gig he's landed. But if Idaho even becomes remotely successful, he's probably leaving. Right. But that's a majority yep. of FCS programs. Most of them are stepping stone. If we like it, they're not, there's very few who are going to be it's here a, in the great scheme to have. Yeah, it's it's a good problem to have. If you can build um, it like Mon like North Dakota State, where you have somebody that <laughs> is it, or Eastern or Eastern Washington is another great example. Yeah. Where as long as you bring a guy in who can be coached up and take that next step almost every year that that next coach, Paul Wolf got him to a level, then Bo Baldwin took him to the next yeah. step. Then, you know, Bo Baldwin leaves. Aaron Best is taking their next step. Same with North Dakota State. Like they went from bowl to climbing. Now it ends pretty seamlessly. That's what you hope for, right? You yeah. hope you don't have like what Montana had happen, right? Where they kind of had that going for a while, and then, and then how the cleaves, and then the wheels fell off the wagon, right? So but, you but hope I, that's the case. But that's the reason why I'm giving it a B minus because for one, he's still not, he hasn't elevated a program completely yet, right? He he yeah. hasn't tanked a program, which is good. That's positive news. But he hasn't changed South Dakota State from being a semifinal team to an every single year. Now they're mm -hmm. the number one team in the nation. They've been about the same. They've been on the same rise for a while. And then, you know, I just need to see him actually be a head coach before I can give it anything better than a B minus. But the mm -hmm. ceiling's high for Eck. The ceiling's high for Idaho. But until I actually see it on paper, see it on the field, I can't do anything more than a B minus on a guy who's never coached or been a head coach. Yeah. I'll take All right, I'll so take the B. Get a B I'll in front of there, so I'll take it. I like it because at least he's got the you know SDSU experience. Worst case scenario, if he's not a good coach, he knows how a good program is ran, right? So yeah. hopefully mm -hmm. that can at least translate. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's talk about the transfers. So linebacker Paul Mola uh, from Notre Dame. He played in – oh, that's the wrong one. There we go. Uh, 31 games. Uh, he ended up suffering back-to-back -back Achilles tears in both 20 and 21. Uh, pretty – 
I mean, he was a legit player for Notre Dame. A solid snag. You also have Julian Falanico, uh, also a linebacker who I believe has actually moved to a D end. Uh, he played in 28 games for USC. And obviously you have Jabori Gibbs, quarterback, South Dakota State, played in 10 games, 75 for 128, 10 touchdowns, four interceptions, 59% completion, 104 yards on the ground and four touchdowns. He was 2019's all, uh, newcomer of the year for the Missouri Valley Football Conference. Transfers out, you have offensive line Seth Carnahan crossing the border to Eastern Washington. He played in 27 games for the Vandals, was a perennial starter. Uh, we actually lose some significant guys. You have, like Kyler mentioned, a line that isn't very deep. We lose, a, I believe he's a two-year starter, at least a two-year heavy contributor in Seth. We lose wide receiver Cottrell Haywood, who used to look like the future of our wide receiving core and the guy who was going to replace Jeff Cotton and used to be Jeff Cotton's cohort. Uh, he's going to Gardner Webb. He played in 28 games for the Vandals, 140 receptions, 1,323 yards, and 14 touchdowns. And that is with only playing four games last year because I think he uh, told the staff early he was going to enter the portal and want to save his red shirt. Uh, then we lose fullback and tight end Logan Kendall from Cheney, Washington, to the University of Utah. He played in 25 games for the Vandals. Only had 16 receptions for 178 yards, but three touchdowns. And anybody that watched him, he was more of a fullback. He was the guy who hit the blocks and opened the holes and was an absolute just – those numbers don't play fair to how big of an impact player uh, he was for the Vandals. So – in terms of the transfers in and out, do you guys have any takeaways on any of these players? I'm um, I have never been that high on Gibb, right? I know it was it was mm. one of those quarterbacks where guess what? If he's on your roster and he's not the starter, great backup to have. So that's a positive. Worst case scenario, he's a great backup to have that has game experience. But I, I know when this transfer happened, a lot of people were like, he's an ek guy, he's gonna absolutely kill it. Idaho maybe solve some of their quarterback questions. I didn't see it from him when I actually watched him play in the Missouri Valley. You know, I thought he was decent, not good, not bad. He's not a guy who's going to win you games, but he's not a guy who's going to lose you games. So if you have great pieces around him, he can flourish. If you don't have that depth, if you don't have those good pieces around, he's probably not going to bring something to the table that will elevate the gameplay. Um, but other than that, that Notre Dame transfer, huge. Because mm -hmm. this is not just a guy who's, all right, I never played. I'm going to Idaho. He played. He played for Notre Dame, right? Yeah. Always he top was tier Mr. talent. Indiana. Yeah, always top tier talent. So when I'm looking at like some of the transfers around the big sky and the FCS in general, this one, huge. And Idaho already has some great D lines in the bat past. They've had some great linebackers in the past. That is a scary pickup. So that's a solid one. I'll give those. Those are my two opinions. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I've heard nothing but good things so far about uh, Moala and uh, Felonico. Um, I've heard nothing but great things. Um, so those are great, right? You you compare Moala with Favai Favai, just get that Polly's in there, get those, you know, power five transfers, yeah. play a linebacker, Jesus speed, Christ. some experience, right? <laughs> um, so Our those linebackers are, great. are all. Former power five linebackers. And they're power legit five. power five. Yeah, they all play. Yeah, power Fave fives. Fave left yeah. Wazoo because he just didn't like Mike Leach was yeah. starting for yeah. him. Maloa had left him because he's starting just for get, him. Just get the Paul. Well, Nico has gotta... played a little bit less than the other two guys, but still, still was a contributor hey, hey, at USC. He wasn't our, just our, a special. Our Paulies the last few years, right? I don't have to even mention the Ellis brothers. Um, yeah. But, well, we're know, out of Ellis the, brothers, so we needed this. I know. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I'll get on to that when we talk about Logan. I actually, I'll, I'll say now, I were actually, I was in Ute Salt Lake um, a couple months, about a month and a half ago for business and texted, texted Luther Ellis. And I was like, hey, hey coach, I'm in town. You know, love to swim by the facility. He's like, yeah, come on through. So I went and saw Coach Ellis, went to Utah's football facility, and actually ran into Logan. And he's just looking like a the biggest brick shit house you could imagine. Um, Is he like two eighty? Uh, he's, he's he's lost a little weight. Now he's trimmed. He's trimmed down on like mid two sixties, low two sixties, and he's looking lean. Um, and it's crazy, you know, because because Luther's the D line coach or D D tackles coach there uh, at Utah, and uh, there, he has another son, Jonah. Um, 
played significant snaps for the snaps for them last year as a true freshman. So another Ellis um, never seems to stop, but at least the big sky got away from him and doesn't have to fear him anymore. Now they're yeah, just terrorizing now we the back 12. A holes. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. You know, Gibbs, I will talk about the tr- quarterback situation. You know, we were, we were linked to a lot of transfer quarterbacks this, this yeah. last spring and summer. I mean, I talked about pre-show AJ Meyer ended up, he was down to us and down to Arkansas state. He goes Arkansas state. Um, Jeff Undercuffler, who, you know, some FCS pedigree there was down to us. And that we aim for Will Mackle or Will, the guy who used to be at Northern Iowa and now is at what, Central Arkansas? Arkansas. Central Arkansas. He went to Central Arkansas. Yeah. So again, there's, there's, that's just like three guys I named off the top of my head. So Gibbs was clearly not the first option because, and, and Eck knows it was more of a safer fallback option because Eck knows him than not what he wanted. So, um, then I'll kind of play into my predictions later, but it's I wouldn't view Bore Gibbs as the end all be all of what you expect Idaho's quarterback to be. Yeah. Uh well you touched uh, I mean, do you have anything else you kind of touched on Logan Kendall? Otherwise we can move on. Um, I mean, I think I well actually, actually yeah, let's take it transfers out because there is some serious news yeah, on the transfer out. I, I mean, these are actually I, I three was, Kyler and I yeah. have covered these transfers before, and we've kind of talked about like how a lot of the transfers in were like, ah, oh, well, they seem like they have good pedigree. They weren't very involved. And then the transfers out were like, ah, oh, I recognize like two or three maybe of these names. We literally lost three contributors, starters, yeah, like impact yeah. players, mean, senior Logan, leaders. Logan's not one. Logan's not one. I mean, that's that's a fully understandable one. And I'll kind of play each transfer out for a situation. Cottrell, I'm not surprised, left. Um we always kind of felt, I mean, you know, watching watching from afar these last couple of years, I always felt like he never quite lived up to his potential of what he could do, how much of that he was came quarterback so driven. Hot his first year. Right. He's and you know how much Jeff of that was in his first year. Yeah, and how much of that was quarterback driven and just lack of consistency and timing. But clearly he would have gone somewhere better than Gardner Webb if, you know, coaches thought more yeah. highly of him, right? That kind of plays into it. And Seth, you know, talk about uh, you lose a contributor. I'll just be honest with you, the offensive line has the last few years has sucked anyway. So I'm not saying Seth is bad, but you know, you lose a piece of a bad, bad unit that I mean, the unit needs to turn over anyway, right? So I, I guess just get going on, get get moving on with it. It's like it's like being a soccer fan. Like, well, do you get the bad apples out now that are kind of good? Or do you just like let them or do you just kind of let them sit around and hope they contribute to you? Not he's a bad apple. Seth's a great guy. I love Seth, right? Great guy. It's just more. The unit needs to change over anyway. Let's just, let's just get it moving. So that's how yeah, I kind of view that, that one. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I would say that's – I mean, Cottrell Haywood, you hit on it. Used to be contributing like Hugh. Like, we had high hopes for him. It was mm-hmm. Cotton and Cottrell are going to be the wide receiving core for three years, and we're going to tear up the big sky. And, you know, we finally have, like, two guys that can run toe-to-toe with dudes like what Eastern has. And then Cottrell just – I don't know. About 2020, he kind of started – not looking like himself. And then by the time last season came and we, we noticed that he wasn't on the field much. I think mm-hmm. he just informed the staff because his last game was like week five. I think he just yeah. literally said, look, I'm yeah, going to enter the border. I'd appreciate that. if you guys don't play me so I can use the red shirt. And so he's like, I think right. he's still technically a red shirt sophomore with the COVID year. No, I don't understand eligibility. Uh, yeah. Knows? So, I mean, I think Carter Webb career. gets him for two years. I hope he turns his career around because I like watching him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, that's kind of, and then yeah, we touched on it. Logan Kendall's kind of a, a big loss, but uh, is that all of it for transfers? For me, yes. Okay, perfect. So let's talk about uh, the roster a little bit. We kind of flirted with Ooh. it with the Jabora Gibbs stuff. Uh, headlines for the Idaho Vandals another year, another quarterback competition. We're going on what four, five straight seasons now with quarterback competitions at the University of Idaho. <laughs> Um, were they quarterback competitions? Well, where the fans don't know who mm-hmm. should be playing quarterback for the first couple of weeks. Um, go. So we just had a scrimmage, so a little of this is outdated. Although from what I last read on the Lewis Tribune, uh, they didn't name the two. But after the last scrimmage on Saturday, Coach Eck in an interview with Lewis Tribune said that they have narrowed their quarterback competition from four down to four two and he won't name the two publicly and he won't name who the starter is but they will have a starter 
thank God, week one. Because I we've had, what now, four seasons now, Boatman, where we've had dual starters for the first three or four weeks? Chris, I did the math one year, right? We played like six quarterbacks between like that spring season and 2020. <laughs> I, to me, I, uh, yeah, who knows? Yeah. So we know. finally at I'm, least will have a week one starter, somebody that will take all the reps, somebody hopefully Vandal Nation can rally behind, and hopefully they're good. Um, yeah, so with so. that, from what I gathered from him, the five quarterbacks I had marked down were Jabori Gibbs, C.J. Jordan, Giovanni McCoy, Jack Lane, who's a freshman, and then Ridge Doskol, who's a freshman. Uh, my reading into all this was Ridge was not included in this competition because Jack was mentioned in the scrimmage. He was hurt, wasn't playing, but uh, Eck keep talking him up and saying, he's been really good in practice. He's not here today, but he's been really good in practice. Then obviously everybody knows Giovanni McCoy gets his like, first look kind of really against Eastern last year. And I mean, for coming in against that team in that situation, did not look bad. CJ Jordan, somebody people have been high on for a while. And then obviously Jabori Gibbs, who's a transfer from South Dakota State, who's had just terrible, terrible injury luck. Um, I assumed we're the four. So based off of all that, um, do you have any leaders in the clubhouse for who you think the two are? And if you were coach, if, if you're Coach Eck, who are you starting week one? And who do you want to see start uh, week one, Alex Bowman? If I was a betting man, Chris Hammond, and I had to make odds, Giovanni McCoy is the overwhelming favorite um, to be the starter week one from everything that I've heard. Um, and heard people who were at the scrimmage, right, people who just showed up. A name that I actually think was in contention to start was Jack Lane. And yeah. he is a true freshman walk-on from Oregon who actually won Oregon Gatorade Player of the Year. And he was yeah, a walk-on at Idaho. Good. I mean, yeah, right? I mean, I, I've heard he's, I heard he's a stud. Um, yeah, I heard he got hurt. I heard it's hand-related, and I don't know how long he'll be out. So yeah. that, to me, signals Giovanni's going to be a starter. Um, I've heard CJ just hasn't just been – hasn't just had it. And I don't know if it's – I think it's more um, – mental and just kind of getting going than it is talent and ability. Right. And I haven't heard, I've heard Gibbs has struggled. So if I had to tell you right now who I think, I don't know who the two are, but I can tell you who I think the one is. And I can think the one's me, Giovanni McCoy. I was going to be trotting out there in Martin stadium next Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've heard from the rumor mill, right. That in this scrimmage, McCoy got a majority of the reps and CJ Jordan kind of got the next batch. Um, so from everything that Boatman's heard, it seems like that's going to be what you should expect. Most likely it is going to be McCoy who starts week one. And then you're probably going to have CJ Jordan as your number two or Gibbs. Like we, we do not know. Um, overall three solid quarterbacks that when you look at their tape, you go, how is Idaho not utilizing them th correctly? And again, that is just the outside looking in. I'm not an expert. I am a, a QB armchair expert. When I, when I look at the tape on all three guys, I go, gosh, all three of these guys could be solid at Eastern. So, uh, you know, if those are your three guys and if I can find a way to, you know, if it's mentally, what's if, if it's a mental block and that's what's not pushing them forward, maybe I can get that out of them. You know, maybe it's just they need a little more um, game snaps, uh, a little more confidence under their belt. But if he can do that, I think you have three solid quarterbacks that aren't going to lose you games. Um, some of them I think are, are, you know, more of a game manager, but that's not bad to have if that's your third quarterback. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of talent in this QB room. If you can figure out a way to utilize that talent. So if those are the three, Idaho should be pretty happy compared to some of the other rosters that we've looked at so far this year. We go, Oh, do they have one quarterback? <laughs> Idaho has three that with the right coach, the right system could probably get significant playtime in a lot of FCS programs. Yeah. I think you could. I yeah. think you could even argue for because everything I've heard about Jack Lane, Kyler, is he's he is the real deal. I think he just kind of hit an under recruited spot. I would not be surprised if he's like I heard he had a chance to win the starting job until he got hurt. Like I, I, I well, that's, like he was like he was a stud. Awesome. So that remind that just that just reminds me of like what we were talking about with Idaho State, where uh, name passed me at the moment because that was a couple of days ago. But uh, the Rigby quarterback. I think he had a legitimate shot to win the job at Idaho State. And Kyler and I mentioned 
good news is if Jack Lane is hurt, there's no reason to rush him through it. We don't need him, as Kyler said. He gets four games. Get him his four games, get him a red shirt, and then he's right back in the competition next year. So I'm pro that. I My picks are on the two. I do think it came down to Giovanni McCoy and C.J. Jordan. Uh, just being at the spring game, I know Jabori Gibbs was not there yet, uh, but they were definitely going one and two with Austin Webb, who isn't on the squad anymore. I thought that was interesting. Um, but, uh, anyways, I think those are the two guys. Now I feel bad because my last three Vandal crushes, um, haven't really gotten fair shakes <laughs> at the Idaho quarterback position going back to Jake Luton freaking transfers mm. out, plays great elsewhere. Yeah. That would really hurt. Completing passes yeah, to but in the NFL now. I'm not was never about gonna, it. He, he, didn't even know. he was never going to start over Matt. I'll, I'll, you know, yeah. that's what he wanted. Uh, and, then I, I fell game. in love with uh, Nikhil Nair. He mm. gets a couple looks, then, you know, doesn't really get a start. And then I've been high what on CJ Jordan for three years, and I gave CJ Jordan this freaking bug. That's what's killing him, Boatman. It's not that it, it's not his mental, it's my mental. It's my Chris mental you. has infiltrated yeah. CJ Jordan, and I have screwed him up. And yeah. I, I can't believe it. I, I feel terrible that I've done such a thing. Um, the Hammond curse. It's real. It is. So for mm. that, I'm going to pick, uh, I don't know, uh, somebody else. I'm not, I don't know. Quarterback favorites. <laughs> I do agree. Yeah. I, I'm rooting for uh, Matt Linehan's my favorite quarterback. He can, he can get hurt and that's, that's fine. Uh, as long as you can still coach. Uh, I think Jabori Gibbs, I think you guys are right. I think came in the system, maybe a little too late. I know he knows the system, but like gelling with the teammates, and everything Giovanni and CJ are both redshirt freshmen technically. So they both have been around this program, um, and they have rapport with all these three-year freshmen. This is this is so CJ's dumb. third year, and he's a freshman. <laughs> yeah, CJ's and, third year, and he's a freshman. Yeah, yeah. he's gonna have a doctorate. By the- yeah, well, good thing we offer those. Uh, but I think those are your two. It's me. I'm rolling out CJ Jordan. That said, if I'm Coach Eck, I'm rolling out Jabori Gibbs. Jabori Gibbs' first start was against. The Minnesota Golden Gophers, and I think they lost that game by like two or three points, and that's what really put him on the map. This guy is a power five slayer. Now, the rest of the season, C.J. Jordan or Giovanni McCoy are probably your dudes. Week one, Martin Stadium, the power five slayer back there in the power five slayer. Owen one versus the power five, the power five slayer. Hey, well, I don't want to throw it under like come on, Idaho. But our other quarterbacks have gotten some looks against the power five. I think they did not lose by two. So I think Chris gives us Idaho fans like a bad rap for amount of hopium he has. Yeah. I I just can't believe you said that. This is Idaho in a nutshell. The power five slayer. That means slain power five. He lost. I don't like what he The Power Five. Tyler Tyler Chris doesn't Chris doesn't (laughs) Representing the whole fan base. Jabori <laughs> Gibbs, the Power Five toe kicker. He says this is Idaho in a nutshell. No, Kyler, this is Chris. You talked to Chris too much. This is Chris in a nutshell. This is an Idaho. <laughs> I real Idaho fans are pessimistic about everything. Okay, yeah. it's gonna be Jim. Go watch our former. Go watch our former show. Yeah. That's all it oh, is. This, this is gonna be Pessimism. a fun threesome. We're gonna have threesomes ah. all the time. Yeah, it's <laughs> Love this threesome already. Uh, all right, next headline for the Idaho Vandals, unless anybody has takeaways from the quarterback competition. All, my twice. only takeaway is if some of these don't work out, send them to Eastern and we can show you what you were missing. No, uh, I heard Cal Poly needs some quarterbacks. Or <laughs> Actually, Bo will probably take some of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, well, that was one point I want to talk about. Jabori Gibbs. How funny would it be, though? I mean, I guess Matt Linehan doesn't fall in this category. But, like, let's say he stays on staff, becomes a grad assistant, kind of does, like, the Brian Reader route. We would have Jabori Gibbs and uh, – Oh, who's the Montana State guy we have on? Tucker right Rovig. Tucker, Tucker Rovig. That would be kind of funny having both those guys on the staff. It's kind of two dudes at injuries and just never really got a shot at quarterback and kind of kept getting out recruited. That would be kind of funny having Tucker, Jabori, and Matt Linehan on the staff. Oh, Tucker but. had a shot. Just a linebacker oh, yeah. was way better. <laughs> no. Hey, well, don't, he don't, got dare, the don't say that about our assistant now. And don't, like and subscribe. Words. Hey, Tucker, we got your back. We got your back. Don't listen oh, to this eagle. God. Uh, next headline for the Idaho Vandals. 
Moneyball. It's the last year, thank God, that we have two Power 5 money bag games. And also the last year we get paid any FBS money. Uh, mm. Indiana. RIP. Yeah, RIP. Welcome to the real world, Idaho. Now you have to actually like make R. money. RIP. <laughs> Indiana, That's for those shame. of you that are like, deja vu, am I listening to the 2021 preview? Nope, we are playing in Bloomington, Indiana again for $100,000 more this time. Uh, Inflation. Inflation. Yeah, they're adjusting for inflation. You know, they knew lumber prices would be higher back the in gas of airlines or whenever this thing was booked. Yeah. Um, the jet fuel. That game wasn't close. We're playing the Cougars for the first time in five years. That one hasn't been oh, close boy. since. I don't like, want to talk about that game. Four. Yeah. Yeah. That was the Paul Leach handshake game. No, no, that, this is no, this there's is, a no, gift that was, that was 20, that was in 2013. 2016 was, we were down by, we were down by, it's going to be seven to six at halftime. They blocked the field goal, return it for a touchdown, and then we lose 50 to like 10. Yeah. 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 That and that, and then we lost, time. uh, or we lost the UW the week cold. before pretty bad too, right? Yeah. That was a cold, but then September we September day on the police. Anyway, podcast for another day. The 2016 Eagles versus the 2016 Vandals, but uh, that hey, we at least beat WSU. Was, yeah, we're gonna plug that. <laughs> uh, hey, we're gonna beat them this year on the. Well, we'll okay. talk about it. Uh, Moneyball, though. So, what do you guys think? In turn, I want to use this to be like, obviously, bad for Idaho financially, but I think everybody agrees, good for Idaho. If Idaho with Eck, this is the perfect way to turn the page, get a little bit of injection boost of money. A year where attendance and donations have, or attendance should go up and donations have gone up. So the money should start flowing in and give this new coaching staff a fair shake at um, being able to do stuff. I mean, the Kippy Dome just got what, like a $2 million light improvement or something? I don't know. They just put a bunch Lights of like LEDs nice. and yeah. trying to make it like a basketball many, dome, something like they that. They don't hum anymore. It doesn't yeah, like they buzz don't hum. Nonstop. <laughs> Admit, those so it's like, gonna be quieter in the weird. dome if we start losing yeah. basically. Yeah, the hum the hum is really what got in people's heads. Um it really did. But, uh so I think it's a good thing on that fact. Like, okay, good. Like we don't have 0 and 2. We are scheduling an FCS game, so thank goodness we can't at least be hopefully we gotta beat Drake, but one and oh in terms of the playoff committee's eyes, because that's been our problem the last couple of years as we play, you know. Indiana and Oregon State and freaking Western New Mexico State, and we're 0 and 0 headed into Week Four, and have no wins towards the playoffs. So even if we had been winning, luckily we weren't, so we didn't run into this. We would have had an uphill battle anyways. And I know Kyler will probably speak on this because it's something that unfortunately Eastern has to deal with a bunch because people don't really like coming to Eastern because they usually get smoked, and then you have teams pull out of home and homes on them. So you guys usually do get stuck like with a power five game, a D two game, and then hopefully a home and home with some other FCS team. So what do you guys think about the money games? Do teams need to keep playing power five or G five? And then uh, what's your ideal schedule for like the Idaho Vandals moving forward? Yeah. Uh, so I think that having the money game is, is good, right? Having two of them, not ideal. Uh, now, if you're packing on this FBS money, Pile them on as long as you can still qualify, right? You're building something special. Keep gritting all the money you can. But uh, playing one power five team, awesome. The kids want to play them, right? You're, they're going to Idaho instead of, and I, I don't want to say like a D2 program because Idaho is not a D2 at all. But like some of the nice things right. about being FCS is you are going to have the opportunity to play some of these local power five teams that these kids look up to. Um, so I love the idea of playing one power five or at least one really good G five team, then having a home and home with another top tier. It doesn't have to be a number two or number five team in the nation, but someone in the top 25. Right. And then I like to have a beat up game. If you can ideally pay for an FCS program to come to you, just molly whop them. That's one of the nice things about having a money game or two money games. It basically funds, if you don't have the fan base, it funds that other program to come to you if you can't afford it otherwise. So, yeah, my, my ideal would be have a home and home with a playoff caliber team. Get some type of bum um, like a Drake. I don't want to be disrespectful to Drake, but I'm going to be. Get a bum like Drake. Get a bum like anyone in the Pioneer League. And then get your P5 game for the exposure, 
for the TV, for the money, for just your students and your players who want to go and play some of these big-time games. It's something they all look up to. And if you can somehow upset them, now you become legendary, right? So I, I love the money games in that aspect, uh, but that's my ideal situation for an out-of-conference. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, as someone who's played in these games um, and had the last game ever in the swamp and lost by like 50 or 60, I don't even know the score. Um, yeah, Kyler, if Easter needs a consultant, uh, Boatman can at least give you <laughs> how to have a lightning storm come in and delay the game. Or that's Perfect. I wasn't you there for that one. You were there for that the was, repeat I, journey. I was there for the retread. Nikhil um, Nair's first game time. First yes. quarter, second quarterback. Crowd. I had like I snapped like ten times that game, which is bad because I only do punts. So um, no, I, I, the problem is FCS only playing eleven games. You get hamstrung more on your abilities. Um, we kind of enter some unique years here in twenty four and twenty five where we actually can play twelve games each year, um, which is fantastic and allow when you can play twelve games, go play two power fives because. The our schools like us do rely on these on these dollars, right? Idaho, this is the especially while you can final, still get them. It's our final one, final one. Final one. You know, two point two point three for two games. Shoot, now schools are paying. You know, the SEC schools are paying a million and a half for power for Sun Belt teams. It's ridiculous, right? So you got to go do what you got to do. Um, not everyone is blessed in the big sky like Montana to sell eighteen thousand season tickets. You know, so we got to find revenue other places. So, yeah, and this is also the last one where we really travel back east to play one of these games. You look at our future schedule. We've got, you know, Nevada, Cal, Oregon, Oregon. Wyoming, Wazoo, San Jose State again. So that's that. So this is our last one. We have to travel out of a mountain time zone to go play one of these games, um, which is fantastic. But, you know, and you get the nice eight mile bus ride to the west um, to subsidize the other one. So anytime you can do that, not pay for, not pay a hundred, 200 grand for a plane and just bus guys, eight miles on three buses. That's a win. Um, hey, if they lose, that, you save money because they have to walk back. <laughs> oh God, this is 1960s. Um, other than that, <laughs> having Drake on the schedule, um, fantastic. But this is, this is our first FCS non-con game. Yeah. Actually second because we played Eastern as an on-con that one year, and I will partially take credit for that because I remember telling Tim Mooney we got to do that. Anyway, um, but next we go back to playing Western Oregon. We got to play Western a D2 team. So, but that's the last of that D2 looking at our schedule. I'm looking at it right now, so I'm looking down to my right. Um, yeah, just you got to you got to roll with it, but just be happy that you know we could in the in the committee's eyes roll out of this out of week three being one and zero. Yeah, has it happened? Uh, happen my idea, my ideal schedule, because I agree with you. I think it's good. So I, I want your kind of opinion on this, Alex, and then Kyler as well. So like, I think for Idaho specifically, a great future out of conference schedule would be Wazoo every four years. So basically, every class gets to play them once, and then you alternate it. You go play a Mountain West team, um, whoever that might be. So like Nevada, Wyoming, etc., San Jose State. Not Boise State, never, not, nope, not happening. Any P Mountain West team other than them. Um, and then that's like your big play-up games. And then I would love to see us start doing two FCS games. I would love to see us start playing, like, a, do the Missouri Big Sky Challenge yeah. and, and play, like, a Missouri State, a Western the, Illinois. The, prob or the problem is, is FCS just needs to commit to 12 games as a whole to begin with. Because yeah. you only get it when the calendar aligns, and that's the problem. Like, no, but I'm saying, I'm play... saying, so every year I think we should play a Missouri oh, Valley yeah. team, and then we should play, like Kyler said, kind of a, a as close to D2 FCS yeah. school as you can find. And then our Power Five G5, I think you go Power can Five, that's one, two, a regional G5. So, like 2023 Power Five, 2024 regional G5, 2025, yeah. you do I'm looking at uh, it. regional, and then you make that one of those P5 games. Like a Florida, a Penn State, an Auburn, a Texas a I mean, the money doesn't the money doesn't differ fun. that much when you, yeah. But the money doesn't differ that much when you play. Like we play Oregon in twenty twenty four. I think we're getting about six seventy five, which yeah. is. Pretty but I'm just saying, as a fan, like going to Nebraska, yeah. it was cool. Going to Texas a was cool. Going to Florida is cool. Florida State yep. is cool. Like so, I think like for your fan base, Mizzou. giving them one of those big, not cool. <laughs> 
I stayed in South Lake Union from the zoo. But you were at that game. I don't know if it was oh. any good, but oh, I, oh, I, I, just, I, was I think it's yeah. fun to offer your fan base a cool opportunity like that. Like, I know Kyler was looking at going to Florida this year for Eastern. Like, that's where I'd say, like, every four years, give your fan base one of those big, fun travel games where it's like, yeah. we're going to go to Clemson and we're going to lose, but I get to see Death Valley. Or, I mean, if you think about, like, my time at Idaho as a student and on, I've seen LSU, Texas A&M, Nebraska, Mizzou, both Floridas, like Virginia. I've gotten to see some Penn State. Pocatello. Like, yeah. Pocatello. You, want to, you, want to, you, going, you going to you going to Berkeley next year? Yeah. After spending some time down there, I am. I think every time we play Davis and Sac State, not this year, but every year after, I think I'm going to go. Sac's kind of a fun little we, area. Davis you is know really what's cool. crazy? What, what year are we now back in the Big Sky? We have never played at Sacramento or Weber. Yep. Nope. It is we've I, only played Weaver once. Yeah. It was the year after I was there. We now we'll change now. Welcome to a 13 team conference. God, no, that'll man. change now. You'll, TPI you'll, uh, it's just, it's takes just, notes it's just, off season episode, off season scheduling. You'll play everyone just, twice sorry. in a three year time period. Yeah. All right. Uh let's move into what everybody really wants to see. The 2022 schedule win loss predictions. Starting out week one, Battle of the Palouse, the baddest brawl that's nine miles apart across state lines in the only co- or in the country. I think it's the only one that's like that. Um, who are you guys taking in this game? Boatman, actually, let me pull up my spreadsheet because I have this so I can keep track. Uh, you are first. So we go Alex, Chris, Kyler. Boatman, who are you taking? Coops by a million. Coops by a million. <laughs> All right. Split Zone Duo Podcast is one of the top podcasts in the country for college football, trained by a bunch of the former SB Nation guys. They do an FCS updraft, upset draft every single year. They are believers that the Dickert hire was rush. The Dickert season last year was strictly based on emotion, and they don't think the team has that two years in a row. They obviously are not familiar with uh, Cameron Ward from Incarnate Word, but uh, – they actually picked Idaho Dog. in the second round of their upset draft mm-hmm. to beat Wazoo. They did say it was more of Wazoo than it was Idaho. That's unfortunate. But we that. still lose. I just wanted it out there that people know that some actual big brains did pick Idaho. Small brain move by me, Wazoo. Yeah, uh, they are definitely not familiar with Cam Ward, who if he would have stayed at Incarnate Ward, would have literally broke every single career FCS QB record. He was on pace. He was a freshman that had 7,000 yards and about 80 touchdowns already. It was insane, you know, because there was a COVID year. But, yeah, Cameron Ward is going to do whatever the he wants. <laughs> I had to bleep myself out. Uh, taking WSU win big. Win big. Uh, all right, so percentages, though, on the FBS upsets. Alex? 99.8. <laughs> um, I'll just round to a whole one. You'll you give know, it a one percent chance Idaho wins. One of these games, sure. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a twenty percent chance. Oh I think there's god, a one five percent chance we pull it off. Oh god, Tyler, and I'm you guys, you. It, See, and no. you think super, you think it, it's objective, not subjective? <laughs> so you can't actually measure, or you can measure it on me when when we lose. I'll say that's fine. But had we played four <laughs> more was... times, we would have got one of them. <laughs> oh my god well you were bad uh, at math too because that would have been you know strategy no, uh um, in, yeah, less than 1%. uh kyler what's your percentage for upset Le- here? less than one percent i'm with boatman man less than one percent he's a all right uh indiana the hoosiers back in bloomington boatman i mean it's a loss again uh they don't got michael penix penix jr he's now the starting quarterback for my dogs and in, 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 uh, montlick so um yeah but Go dogs. Um, I love claiming fandom for multiple universities. It's great. I, I just can just throw at the wall and be like, that works. Um, <laughs> yeah. Bad, so, <laughs> so yeah, we're still going to lose by, by 40. So, yeah, we lose. Uh, I think we lost by what, like 56 last year? I think we lose by Yeah, I was generous by saying 40. Yeah. Uh, Kyler? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a double loss. Percentage on this one, Alex? Oh, overall, the odds we only win one of these games is one percent. That's oh, that's so my like, one. So like half, a half a percent, percent for 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm giving us a half of a half percent for the return trip to Bloomington, and they suck. So you you are that high on beat Wazoo? I really respect <laughs> Stephen Godfrey, man. At 38 Godfrey. Add him on Twitter. Be like, yo, there's this oh. guy, Idaho fan on the at football up north podcast uh make sure you tag us we would really appreciate oh it uh, and be like yo he was no. sharing it to the vandal and big sky universe <laughs> that yo you you're picking like, them to win even though they literally like, I asked thought you were saying Idaho's 20 percent for year. both games and i was like ah oh, that's still that's crazy but man this is great half of a percent we beat indiana I'll, though kyler i'll give a two percent because i think wcu is better than indiana and I gave WSU a, a less than one percent, so I'll go less than two percent. All right, they have yeah. a better quarterback than in Indiana, so yeah. yeah, and a good defense. Yeah, uh, Drake, boat. Mm. I hope it's their first win, in the Jason Eck era. Whenever uh, we went for win. biggest game of the year to me, this is biggest game of the year because it is his first real FCS game as a head coach, and it's at home. This is the biggest game of the year for Idaho. All right, uh, I'm going win as well, Kyler. Yeah, you can't sleep on those Bulldogs, right? Uh, no, they, Drake has a good of a chance to beat Idaho as Idaho has to beat WSU. So in Chris's odds, pretty good chance. In it, real people's odds, not a chance. Uh, Idaho picks up a big win by whatever they want. Uh, all right, then we follow that up with a trip at Northern Arizona. <sighs> this is where it gets oh, interesting. Arizona, the, you know, Northern Arizona, the <clears throat> AKA bar. Of the big sky. If you're better than NAU, you're probably a playoff team. If you're worse, you're, you're a cellar dweller. But, you know, you know, I, I follow like political ratings and things like that. Chris, it's election season coming up again. Like, you ever see like they do like likely party or tilt or I'm like tilt NAU here. Like I'd give like NAU like 65% chance to win. So I guess I have to say NAU off of that. But I think Idaho, like this is one like Idaho could sneak out and grab, but I'll say NAU. That's just conventional wisdom. All right. Uh, I am going to give us. We've never won down in Flag. We haven't won since being back on the Big Sky and Flagstaff, have we? Yes, we have. Have we? Then 20, boom. 2019. How's that? How's that Mace Petrino? Like, that oh, was that's that game right. Where... The GOAT game. <laughs> yeah. The uh, haters going to hate yeah. game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. Then if if Petrino and Petrino, Petrino Square can do it, then Eck and that was, like, that was against Case it. Cookus too. It was Kyler. Yeah, if um, <clears throat> so I have a lot of faith that Idaho's front seven is going to be pretty solid. Um, NAU they have a decent, pretty decent offense, right? With R.J. Martinez, um, then Daniels coming back as a running back. But the good thing for Idaho is NAU's defense is atrocious. And I have faith in Idaho's defense over NAU's defense. So I'm going to go with an Idaho win right here. Probably, you know, probably. Idaho win. Kyler and I have right. two and two, two and one for the playoffs. Uh, then we are hosting homecoming the against the Northern Colorado Bears. Boatman in the building here in the non humming lights under the Kibbe Dome. What do you think? I'll be with Boatman Burger out in the parking lot. You know where I'll be. Chris has had him. They're delicious. Um, wait, did you get one Tyler, this year? when he makes it up here, we'll have to have one. Yeah, yeah, um, I don't win. This is I don't win. Uh, I am going to go Idaho win as well. Uh, Northern Colorado is getting better, but I don't think they're quite there. It's homecoming. Idaho, even when we were bad, had like a 13-year win streak on homecoming. Uh, we know how to book them. <laughs> Kyler? Grumpy Joe is going to celebrate. So, yeah, Idaho is winning. Woo! Kyle and I got us on a three-game win streak. There we go. Uh, yeah, then yeah. we smash the bye. The bye stands zero chance week six. Bye game, what get out of here. That? You're getting beat harder than the huh. subscribe and like button right now. Uh, then we are week. at nice. the Little Brown Stein, a.k.a. Oh, Montana, preseason number three. Oh, boy. Boatman, this one will be interesting. You're kind of wild card here. You going brain or emotions? Uh, no, I, 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 I just know – and I like last year during this for Tubbs, I did actually predict that we could almost upset Montana State. I just get a weird feeling for these Montana games where Idaho just does weird shit. Sorry, weird stuff that they shouldn't do. Mainly versus Montana State, but versus Montana is still a mental blocker. They ruined my senior night. I saw Reggie Tillman raise a brown side in my face, and I saw him with his wife and kid over the 
in July, Ben is back in Dorshack. So Montana is still going to kick our ass because that's what they do in Bristol, Idaho. Uh, ooh, I gave you a win on that. My apologies. The three-game win streak does not continue. Uh, we are not quite wow. ready for Montana in Missoula. Although I think Eck has the boys looking good and feisty for this. Um, I think he's going to need a little bit of a wake-up call on some of these rivalry games. Uh, Bobby Howe takes pride in this rivalry. He keeps the little brown sign personally on his desk. So uh, he also he won't be Paul, sleeping so on Idaho. And we have it from hated, an unnamed anonymous Paul. source that Bobby Howe thought Idaho had the third best roster in the Big Sky last year. Yeah, he also he thought Portland probably. State had the second best, so it is That's what it true. is. That's true. Not a reliable source. <laughs> Jesus Christ, top, Bobby Howe. Top, top, top five Portland State. Top, top five, five Portland State. State. What are you talking about? In Stay the nation. Tuned. Tomorrow, we'll be previewing top five Portland State. Way to work that in there, uh, Boatman. The check's in the mail. Uh, <laughs> Kyler, Vandals got any shot against those pesky Grizzlies? They do not. Um, that's about all I'll say. They do not. That's fair. Uh, then they host Portland State. Uh, Boatman, can we beat Portland State in the Kibbe Dome? Boatman froze. That poor, <laughs> He talks back about Portland State. <laughs> they heard Portland State. He hit his Portland State quota, and yeah. so they, they kicked him out of they the – uh, the old broadcast. We'll pull him out. See if he Bobby Barnum. Back. Nope. Uh, while he does, while he reloads. Um, sorry for the listeners who don't see that. Um, I am going to give Idaho a. This is tough. We'll cover Portland State next, but they also have some talent coming in. I think Idaho is going to be pretty good at home, and they've been traditionally good at home. So I'm going to give Idaho the win here at Portland State. I think Boatman is back with us. Boatman, what do you got for Portland State? Um, yeah, we're going to win that game. All right. Boatman with the win against the Vikings, Vandals versus Vikings. Uh, Kyler, what's your thoughts here on the top five Portland State versus yeah, the Idaho Vandals? Out of the Big Sky podcast, I probably follow Portland State probably more than most people. Uh, right? Yeah, the damn cup. The damn cup. Don't have to bleep it because it's spelled D-A-M. Don't have to bleep it. But here's the thing about Portland State. They suck and they always have sucked. They're not going to win. <laughs> Didn't they win the Big Sky one year? I'm just kidding. No! I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'll fight you every six months you say it. Every six months I correct you. Never. Not once in their <laughs> lifetime. I'm pretty that. sure they did. I'm just kidding. Uh, all right, so that's a clean sweep. We all take in Vandals over Portland State? Yep. Cool. Uh, then we got Sac State at mm. number seven, Sac State. Boatman, can they get down? Sacramento, I believe, Hallow's Eve. Yeah, no, Sac State, Troy Taylor is still just too good a coach program um, for Idaho at this point. So Idaho catches another L on the road. All right. Uh, We beat them stingers down. Don't believe in Sac State. Uh, I will take Idaho over the Hornets. I forgot about this. I forgot that I was pro Sac State last year, and Chris thought they were terrible, and they ended up winning the whole freaking conference, and I just laughed and danced on your Until grave. Until for the second straight year, they choke in the playoffs. I don't care. I just danced on your grave. I told you they were going to win the conference, and they did. So. Unbalanced scheduling. Unbalanced scheduling. Well, They almost lost Idaho you. State last year. You got to play who's in front of you, all right? Uh, Kyler? I do not think Sac State is as good as their ranking, right? Uh, but that being said, I'm still going to pick Sac State to beat Idaho this coming season. All right. So going into the final three weeks of the season, Boatman has him at three and five. Chris has him at five and three. Kyler has him at four and four, really four and two if you're counting playoffs. They are a fringe playoff team at the moment. How will the Vandals finish? Boatman, it's the Red Scare, the Cold War. The game that's 77.7 miles away, we host the Eastern Washington Eagles. The game in which the home team has dominated in this rivalry. Does the domination continue, or was that strictly Aaron Best and Paul Petrino not being the best? (laughs) (laughs) They hate each other. (laughs) That's what's funny. Um, 
I was ready to I was ready to pick East uh, pick Eastern, but then I literally just remembered that the home team has won this game like every year. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I just have to go Idaho just based off of history, like at, in the recent histories, 2019 on or 2018 on. It's been the home team, and I it just I guess I have to go Idaho just because of that. And I don't think they're I don't think they're better, but I think Eastern as Kyle, you know, I think you've said in our chats that you think Eastern's probably hovering around barely north of a 500 team. So this isn't the best Eastern team we face. So we've, we've beaten better Eastern teams with arguably potentially worse quarterback play. So I'll go Idaho. We have beaten better Eastern teams. We have played very well against them in the kibbles and bits dome. That was, it was humming in more than just one way back then. I think the Vandals are going to be really, really strong at home this season. But that was strictly Paul Petrino's energy in that game. The Eagles get their first win in the Kibbe Dome since 2012. I'm taking the Eags. And I understand that my follows just dropped by 300 people. No, it's just, <laughs> this is just gained by 300 people in China. I picked us to lose to Eastern <laughs> and Montana. I now cannot attend a single home game in Moscow. I will be guilty. <laughs> Yeah, I actually think this is going to be a really good game mm-hmm. where it's whoever has the ball probably last series is probably going to win. I think Eastern's a very good running team this season with a really good defense, surprisingly. So I think it's going to be a low-scoring game on both sides of the ball. Um, I'm going to probably, and you can call me kind of a homer, I think the streak ends, right? The home streaks always end. One day Montana's going to beat us on the red. Hasn't happened yet. One day we're going to come back and beat an FCS Idaho team at the Kibbe Dome. So I'm, I'm going to say it's this year. And one right. day Idaho's going to be Boise State. Um, this game is on my birthday, so nice. I'll ask my birthday is that Idaho wins. So sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Well, they're crap. Be oh, right to the Easter Bunny. Yeah, I forgot. Uh, Santa, everything. Just write them all. Uh, <laughs> then we host UC Davis and Dan Hackens in the Kibbe Dome for senior night. Oatman, do the seniors get a dub? Their last <sighs> game potentially – if they don't make the playoffs, I just don't know how good UC Davis season game in the Kibbe Dome. I just don't know how good UC Davis is. This is like an enigma team for me in the last few years. Like, I feel like be really good, and they always kind of underperform. The years when I think they're down, they, should, they end up being better than they should be. I'm a big believer in situational football and timing. So big, sa- mo- big sandwich game for Idaho coming between two. Supposed rivalry games. So I will pick UC Davis to win. All right. UC Davis to win. I also am going to take the Aggies to win. Idaho does not have Dan Hawkins' number. Doesn't matter what colors he wears on his chest, he beats us. So uh, I'm going Aggies get the dub in the dome and sour our playoff hopes and senior night. Kyler? Um, I think streaks are made to be broken this season. Mm. I'm going to go with Idaho upsetting UC Davis, who I'm not that high on. Um, I think Idaho gets it done. They build some momentum for the future. This is where the Idaho fan base starts going, we have a chance to be something special in the next few years. They're going to come out every single game. Well, that's the last game of the season. But from there on out, Idaho is going to be – Back, return to dominance. Uh, hashtag. Oof. No, I think we just did hashtag the return. Wasn't that? Oh, important? okay. Yes. No, but yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I think Idaho gets a win and uh, knocks UC Davis out of the playoffs. Okay. All right. Then we have the Battle of the Domes in Pocatello, Idaho. Uh, I'll be at this one. Boatman, am I going to be happy or sad leaving the stadium? Uh, you're going to be happy. And this is one weird one. We talk about rivalries for Idaho. In terms of players, they they really, like, from the guys I knew who were still there, they, like, really dislike Idaho State. And I think it's because some of them kind of go back to that time when we played them in Pocatello that first year and got our asses handed to us, like, just killed. That one was, like, weird. Like, it was a Eastern Washington ass-kicking version of 2018. And that really hurt a lot of guys. And I think a lot of our guys just don't like Idaho State. And I don't know what it is. Like, you could argue Montana's a bigger rival. Um, but, yeah, I, I our guys get for Idaho State. Just want to kick the crap out of them. So, we're, yeah, we're going to win that game. Yeah, look, 
it, it's a weird place to play. I agree with you. I think it's growing in terms of it being a rivalry, something when we joined the Big Sky, it was not. I think it is flirting with that. I, I argue team. they're more of a rival than Eastern. I will say that, and I, I don't know why I do, but I think that's just where it's at right now. I think yeah. Eastern feels a little more forced, even though we're close. That's just kind of where it – So I, I think, think if you look at Eck, Eck is from Wisconsin. He has gotten most of his coaching chops – at South Dakota State. Both of those schools have out-of-state big rivalries. I think that is what we should expect from that going forward. I think you will see more emphasis put on Eastern and Montana than mm-hmm. Idaho State. Look no further. I know it was the defense in last season with South Dakota State. Had no business upsetting – or South Dakota had no business upsetting South Dakota State. Uh, they did because they view their big rival as North Dakota State, not South Dakota. Uh I think Ragel and the boys, this is there. We are also turning the corner game. It's our third straight frippin' year at the freaking Poca Hello Mini Dome. Mm-hmm. At least we get to see the new and improved one. Like the one blessing in disguise here is I get to see but is it the not- new and improved. Yeah, it's still it's still crap. Hey, at least it's not a rainbow in there. I mean, like they actually have like seats relative to their school. It's and still crap. Luxury seating. Uh, I don't think Van- Idaho. Oh, you know what? Shoot, I'm in that conundrum. Tyler and I talked about this in the first three episodes. How if you check all of our answers through all these, they might not actually like gel. I did pick in the Idaho State one, Idaho to win this, didn't I, Kyler? I would. And you picked so. Idaho to lose. Did Ooh, I? I really want to pick Idaho to lose here. I thought I picked them, but to I, win. I've I've kept consistency so far. All right, I think Idaho State could win this game. It's going to be a 49-51 game. But to try to keep these consistent, in the Idaho State preview, I did pick Idaho to win. I can't believe I'm giving Idaho six wins. I disagree with this strongly. But I have Idaho at six and five, and they get a win to close out the year. I can't do it. Nope, they lose Idaho State. There's no way we finish six and five this year. You finish six and five because after reviewing Idaho State's roster – they have a really big offensive line. Nothing else impressed me at all. You're right. I flop roster. again. <laughs> so um, just looking at the pure rosters, I think Idaho should pretty much be able to do whatever they want. It's a full season under Eck. This is his last game. He wants to prove something. He wants to continue to build something after they just upset and knocked out UC Davis from the playoffs. So they yeah. end on a high note, the battle of the domes, ICCU rivalry, whatever you want to call it. Idaho wins its sixth game. So then, Kyler, wow. to ask you, that puts no, us they're in not a playoff, in the playoff record of no. six and three on the resume. No, they're okay. not in the okay. playoffs. What game did Kyler not have in. us? Kyler had us what losing to Eastern, right? Is that the only kind of one? Okay, Kyler. Montana, Eastern, yeah, Eastern. Kyler has us having wins over Drake, Northern Arizona, Northern Colorado, Portland State, UC Davis, and Idaho State with losses okay, so you- at Montana. At Sac State and home against Eastern, so that would be two so, away top ten potential. Six losses. and five does not get us in, but Kyler, if we are seven and four, if Idaho somehow seven and four, is this a playoff team? If they seven get, are seven and, and four, seven and four, it, it depends on who their wins are. Because their wins Eastern their Washington, or, yeah. Because Eastern Washington's been seven and four and a number seventeen team in the nation and did not make the playoffs. Okay, and they brought in some bums because they had. An early season ranked win at the time who ended up being four and seven. So but it all the, just depends on what the committee views at the time and where okay. do they pick up those wins. But as guess, the big boy show noted in the over under episode, plug also Instagram logo right now, click, click, bang, bang. Uh, there are going to be some spots that are not typically there. Not that for are a no longer, they are vacant now with Sam Houston State leaving. Or not I leaving, but not being eligible. Jacksonville State and James Madison. So in theory, there are three extra. I don't. Spots I don't understand. Guys. I don't even understand what's going on with automatic bids. I, I. I guess with me, the floor for this team is four and seven. The ceiling seven and four. Mm-hmm. That's why I generally laid on five and six or six and five, and I just yep. tilt to the under. So that's why I land on five and six, Jim. And I'm tilting to the over six and five. Yeah, this has been a long one. I'm tilting more towards four to five. I don't know how I ended up with six and five, but maybe I'm right. Uh, look like that classic hedge your bets. Um, all right, final takeaways, and let's get out of here. Uh, 
what do you guys think of Idaho for the 2022 season? What should Vandal fans be looking forward to and taking away, Boatman? I think the record might be a slight improvement. It could be pretty similar, but I think you're not going to be embarrassed. So that's what should matter. Kyler? Look for more competitive games and look for a culture shift. I mean, that that's the big thing. Look for a culture shift, more competitive games. You're probably still going to lose the ones you're supposed to lose, but at least you're not getting blown out. Yeah. My takeaway is give Eck time, man. He got he was a late hire because his team was playing in the the freaking quarterfinals. So uh, he didn't get a full recruiting class in under him. We're seeing what he's doing on the recruiting trail. Very likely this team could be four and seven again next year uh, or this year. But you'll see a more competitive team, a team with more fight, a team that looks more like they've turned the quarter and less treading water. So I would just say to Vandal fans, though it might not show up in the win and loss record, this will be a better team than it was the past couple seasons. That's what I would leave Vandal fans with. And we'll get you guys out of here because we already kept you longer than we normally do. And uh, we'll catch you guys with Portland State tomorrow.